Welcome to the select board meeting on Monday, June 1st. Um, before I start with the remote participation executive order, um, I do want to say um, to everyone in Arlington, a week later after the death of um, George Floyd, a human being, a black man, a son, a brother, um, again, a human being, um, obviously on top of the pandemic, has brought a lot of issues that really have been percolating for much too long. I was thinking about this issue today, and I remember when I first thought the watershed moment was when I was pregnant with my third child and uh, Rodney King, uh, the incident happened where um, he was taken out and beaten by police officers and then the acquittal and all the unrest then. And I really thought that would be the watershed moment. And then as I was going through trying to think about um, other people that we've lost, like Amadou Diallo and Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown and Freddie Gray, Eric Gardner, and now Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd. Um, I hate that we just keep saying names. Um, I know when everyone watched that video of Mr. Floyd being murdered, um, really struck myself and everyone in Arlington, as well as the state and the nation, really to the core. And um, I do want to say I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that this will be the watershed moment that I thought we'd have back in 1991. And here we are in 2020. Um, and, and the reason why I say I'm hopeful is because of the town of Arlington. I am so proud of our residents, our employees here in the town. Um, I'm, I'm so proud and I'm hopeful when I hear about um, Issa Dre, who I believe is an Arlington High School student who started organizing peaceful social distancing um, protest rallies up and down the app in Arlington from six to seven. Um, I'm hopeful when I hear that Father Mock from St. Agnes uh, this past Sunday and again next Sunday at 5 p.m. Uh, started walking from the St. Agnes um, school, church, up to town hall and gave some thoughts and prayers of strength and hope um, to help Arlington and the rest of the country uh, get through these tragic times. Um, and I'm also hopeful because last fall, the select board and town manager and others took this issue head on when residents came in, concerned residents, came in and provided testimony to us, either personal or, or their neighbor's testimony about racism and the, and the fear, not only the fear they live with, but the fact they live with racism. And since last fall, your town leaders elected and appointed, we've been getting training, talking to people one-on-one, -on -one, you know, learning about individual, interpersonal, institutional, structural, systemic racism, because it is out there. Uh, it's just a matter of what form or forms it is. But again, I want to say to Arlington, um, along with my colleagues on the board, Dan Dunn, Joe Kiro, John Hurd, and Steve DeCourcy, and our town manager, Adam Chapland, and all our town employees, um, we're committed to this very important issue. We're hopeful by our Arlington residents, how they have risen um, proudly, safely, um, to say this is important. And also, work with our Arlington Human Rights Commission. A lot of people are saying, you know, after the protests or rallies aren't there anymore, where else can we go? There's always the select board, but we also have an Arlington Human Rights Commission, two brand new commissioners, Mel Goldsipe, who was fantastic. She's still fantastic, but she had to move out of state. But we have two new commissioners with a lot of energy, as well as the current commissioners on there. So I just want to say thank you to Arlington. Thank you for giving us hope. Thank you, thank you for um, exercising your freedom of speech safely, and let's just continue to take care of each other. So, um, I want to thank my colleagues for allowing me to say those remarks. I also want to, before I read the um, remote participation, that I just want to let the public know that our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, also has to do dual duty tonight. He needs to virtually be at the finance committee meeting around 7.30. So um, if you notice his absence, that's why. And when um, he's no longer needed at finance committee, he'll rejoin a select board meeting. So um, 
As a preliminary matter, I'm Diane Mahan, Select Board Chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Dan Dunn? Yes. Joe Kiro? Yes. John Hurd? Yes. Steve DeCourcy? Yes. And staff, when I call your name, also please respond in the affirmative. Our town manager, Adam Chapdelaine? Yes. And our town council, Douglas Hine? Yes. Uh, good evening. This is an open meeting of the Arlington Select Board being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the coronavirus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and, as such, the Governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public, further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not require ensuring public participation unless there is a public hearing item on the agenda or other provision for public comment such as tonight's Citizens Open Forum. This meeting will feature opportunities for public comment as well as the open forum for resident comments. The select board is convening this meeting by Zoom is posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join in. The public may join this meeting either through the Zoom app or using the telephone dial-in number. It is also being broadcast on ACMI. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that anything broadcasted may be captured by the recording. Please also take care to adjust your screen or device name if you would like to speak. In order for us to recognize speakers appropriately and develop accurate minutes, it is helpful for participants to see your full first and last name when calling upon you rather than a nickname. Finally, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. All of the materials for this meeting are available on the Novus Agenda dashboard and the board's website. We recommend the members and the public follow the agenda as posted on Novus unless I note otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, I will go down the line of select board members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called, which is helpful for those persons who are attending the meeting by telephone. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps to generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. This meeting will feature opportunities for public comment um, under Citizens Open Forum. After members have spoken, I, as the chair, will afford public comment opportunities as follow. I will first ask members of the public who wish to speak to raise their hand on the Zoom app. For any persons attending by phone, please note that you can raise your hand during public comment periods by pressing star nine. Once I have a list of all public commentators, I will call on each name and afford three minutes for any comments. Please keep in mind that all participants and members of the public must be recognized by the chair before speaking, and for persons participating by phone, you should identify your name and address for the record when called upon. Citizens Open Forum will function much the same way. I will first ask members of the public who wish to speak for Citizens Open Forum to raise their hands on the Zoom app. Again, any persons attending by telephone, please note that you can raise your hand during Citizens Open Forum by pressing star nine. Once I have a list of all persons wishing to speak on Citizens Open Forum, I will call on each by name and afford three minutes per speaker. Please keep in mind that all participants and members of the public must be recognized by the chair before speaking and that the board does not typically engage in colloquy. In Citizens Open Forum, because such items are not on the agenda for discussion. So with that, I will go to our consent agenda. 
we have the minutes of the meeting, May 4th, 2020, May 18th, 2020, a date change approval, Arlington Public Youth Art Banner Initiative, originally approved November 18th, 2019. It was going to be April 2020 to June 2020. The request is for July 2020 to August 2020. Caitlin Longmire is the project coordinator. Approval for the Arlington International Film Festival banners. April, April Rank. Uh, Executive Director and Alberto Guzman, AIFF, request for contractor drain layers license, Tufts Construction, Inc., out of Everett, Mass. And then with our gratitude, we have the appointment of new election workers. Jeffrey Kendall, 16 Pelham Terrace, unenrolled, Precinct 8. Frank Foster, Jr., 174 Situate Street, Democrat, Precinct 11. Christopher Harrington, 74 Columbia Road, unenrolled, Precinct 13. Aaron Lit Van 215 Mass Ave, unenrolled Precinct 2, Stacy Lowry Sloboda, 38 Grafton Street, Democrat Precinct 3, Cheryl Luongo, 43 Millet Street, Republican Precinct 10, Anne McLean, 39 Situate Street, unenrolled Precinct 7, Philip Malatestas, 8 Walnut Terrace Road, Republican Precinct 14, Beth Malofchek, 20 Russell Street, unenrolled Precinct 10, Jeffrey Smith, 61 Yerkeser Road, unenrolled, Precinct 15. And Katari Wagner Nunes, 129 Pleasant Street, Democrat, Precinct 7. First, is there a motion by Mr. Dunn? Uh, move approval of all items on the consent agenda. And is there a second? Mr. Second. Okay. Mr. Dunn and Mr. Kiro. Um, I would ask if um, anyone is here from the Arlington Public Art Youth Banner Initiative or the Arlington International Film Festival banners. If you are and would like to speak, you can raise your hand now. Attorney Heim. Madam Chair, we have one uh, person who's raising their hand is, uh, what I have as a name is Scott Arena Hauk Mullen. So, um, I'll try to see if that promote that person to, uh, Oh, nope. That person has since lowered their hand. Okay. <laughs> and Scott has notified us. Sorry. False alarm. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, with that, um, uh, many comments or questions, Mr. Dunn. No, thank you. Mr. Kiro. None. Mr. Hurd. No comments. Mr. DeCourcy. None. So on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Uh, roll call, Attorney Hine, please. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Kiro. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Ms. Mahan. Yes. So that is a unanimous vote for agenda items two, three, four, five, and six. We now will go to Citizens Open Forum as I read the preamble. If you do want to speak, if you could raise your hand through Zoom or through star nine on your phone. Except in, in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Um, Attorney Hind. So, Madam Chair, I see that John Leone uh, has his hand, hand raised. Kate Bird has her hand raised. James O'Connor has his hand raised. Galen Mook has, or Galen has uh, their hand raised. And Len Diggins. Just give it one more minute to see if we've got any other folks. Looks like we've got five attendees with hands raised. Madam Chair, what order would you like to take them in? Um, I will first call on our town moderator, John Leone. Okay, Mr. Leone, I'm gonna promote you to panelist. Hold on a moment. Mr. Leone, I think if you unmute yourself, or I'll unmute you, you should be set to go. 
Kathy, get my video going. Here we go. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Mr. Hunt. Um, I assume you all received the letter I sent around this afternoon trying to detail what I believe the current state is for our town meeting that's currently scheduled for June 15th. I wanted to bring that to everyone's attention at this time because it's only two weeks away. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple of things that I believe we need to move forward on between now and then. Um, as detailed in that letter, I've had some discussions with Mr. Chapdelaine and Ms. Bongiorno about this. Um, and if we're going to do it in the 15th, I would like to sort of get a nod of approval from the various departments and boards in Ms. Bongiorno that we should finalize our planning because it is going to take some more um, planning and coordination between uh, myself, the manager, the fire chief, the police chief, um, on who is going to be doing what roles. I have spoke to Ms. Bo uh, Dr. Bodie today as well, and she does have chairs that we'd be able to use to set up on the field. Um, in that package of stuff I sent you, you will find a diagram of what the proposed setup would look like with safe seating, distances, proper roads, etc. cetera. Um, I've spoken to ACMI, Jeff Monroe. Jeff is going to go down as soon as I give him the go ahead to um, do some testing to see if the projector that they have will be able to project onto the screen set up in front of the press box. And we may also be able to get four TVs set up around the perimeter of the seating area so if we'd be able to use the clicker so we'd be able to comply with the bylaws regarding um, if five people arise and they want to see what their vote was, we could comply with that. My preference would be to use the clickers because one, it would eliminate at least one or two people at the check-in table and we would not have to have those town employees even though we could have them with plexiglass. So. My purpose in writing that and appearing here tonight was to kind of see if there's anything that any of you have thinking about or that you should make me aware of, or if you think this is a good or a bad idea in general. Um, I'm not sure what else we would do besides wait. Uh, as you see, some other towns are trying to do this virtually. However, most of those towns have a um, computer whiz, either on the board of selectmen or some other department in town and they have basically written nice interfaces. Um, I've seen Lexington's, I've spoken to people in both Winchester and um, Brookline and their IT departments or their individuals have written programming that would allow them to do a virtual town meeting. I've heard today that the Senate has passed the bill as well as the House, it just hasn't been signed yet. So that's kind of the status of where I'm at right now. Um, I have been contacted by at least one high school parent expressing dissatisfaction that we'd hold town meeting and that they could not have graduation. And I wrote back to that woman that there's a few differences between town meeting members and high schoolers. One, I would expect we're going to have somewhere between 100 and 150. There are 330 town, uh, high schoolers. Each one of those high schools would bring three to four individuals. So you'd have over a thousand people in the crowd. Town meeting members are, well, we're all adults. We're going to be hyper vigilant about social distancing, wearing our masks, which I'm going to require. And we're not going to be hugging and cheering each other on, um, <clears throat> among other things. Plus, we're going to get in there and get out of there as instructed and not hang about. So I, I well, I feel bad for the high school kids, and I truly am empathetic for them. I don't really see a parallel between town meeting, which is exempt from the governor's regulations of 10 people or more, and town meeting and high school graduation. So I'll take the heat for that um, if necessary, but I don't really see a parallel. Um, the only thing I would ask is that um, I've spoken to Joan, uh, Roman and Adam Kowalski of the IT department and as ask them to conduct a survey of the town meeting members to see if basically if we run it will you come and to make sure we would be able to get a, a, 
our quorum of 62 and 85 for bonded votes. So I would ask that the manager um, instruct his folks to go ahead and do that. Being the moderator, I have no authority to do anything <laughs> except yeah. run town meeting. And I'll, I'll say to that so point, I, um, we're at right there. Uh, did speak with our town moderator some length uh, earlier today. Seems like it was yesterday, but it was today. Yeah. Uh, and had a conversation with um, our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, about uh, getting a survey out of town meeting members um, and finding out if we're going to have the requisite forum as well as the 85 number for um, the bonding articles. And he thought that was a good, very good idea. And um, if you could work with, contact Mr. Chapdelaine about what the verbiage, the wording on this should be, um, as well as um, every day is like a year in Arlington for everybody. But also, um, also we've had some discussion around um, people who are town meeting members or member members of the public and want to watch it on ACMI and or possibly my colleagues and I um, have been discussing um, looking into a, a Zoom webinar feature also. So, but the first thing is uh, the order of business. I believe that the moderator is outlined. Let's make sure, you know, I'm saying if we build it, will they come um, that we, we do have enough. So Mr. Chapterling is willing to do that. Um, and we'll get that on right away. And I'll leave that to you, Mr. Uh, Leone, to follow up with Mr. Chapter yeah, later. I'll call him in the morning. Um, there, I, there is enough um, fiber cable running out to the press box so we can broadcast, cable cast over ACMI and provide internet access for the members. We just have to get Mr. Good to ver verify the um, fiber is active and get enough routers out there for everybody. Okay. I'm sure he can do it. Okay. Um, uh, because we are talking about town meeting and the town moderator is asking if any members of the board would want to relay something um, for town meeting on June 15th. Uh, Mr. Dunn? Hey, Madam Chair? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry Attorney I, Hine? Yes. I, I'm so sorry because I don't, I, I hate to do this. I know that the moderator is trying to keep okay. the public informed, but because it's not an agenda item, I just don't want to put I know that you're just sharing information. The moderator is just sharing information. It's not an, a discussion of things that are under the control of the select board uh, jurisdiction. I just want to remind folks that that, it, that it's not an agenda item. So it, it's, it's, okay. it's you know, we should be aware of. Then I, I guess I'll instruct my colleagues to um, either communicate with our town manager and or town moderator. And, and they're free to email or call me. I believe they all have my number. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Attorney Hyde. <laughs> I'm a little scrambled eggs right now. Sorry. Um, next, uh, our, our thank you, assistant, all. Uh, thank you, Mr. Leone, our assistant um, town moderator, and I believe he's a co-chair of our election modernization committee, um, Mr. O'Connor. <clears throat> if you could join, yes, Attorney Heim. I'll bring on Mr. O'Connor. I just want to note that there's also a new hand raised for a Mr. Thomas Proctor. Okay. Um, Mr. O'Connor, in now, I'm sure. If Mr. O'Connor can hear us, if you could. Um, Setting that up. There we go. Okay. Good if evening. Just say your name and titles for the record, please. Uh, James O'Connor, Assistant Moderator and Chair of the Election Modernization Committee, Paul Warden from Precinct 20. I come before you to request a vote to increase the rate of compensation for the upcoming local election. In view of the COVID-19 pandemic and the extraordinary measures by the town to provide a safe environment for both Arlington voters and the election workers, it seems appropriate and fair to compensate the staff who will work this coming Saturday, June 6th. Although many of the Arlington voters have requested a ballot by mail via the recent mailing of a postcard, we must provide sufficient staff to accommodate any eligible voter who prefers to vote in person while processing the mailed-in ballots. 
there may be a need for some relief workers and I recommend that we prepare a standby list for precinct or polling location assistance should this be necessary. With the present staffing schedule being reduced to a minimum, yet the workload being the same or greater, I submit the following for your review and vote tonight. Now, I realize that you cannot vote tonight because this is under citizen open forum, but in looking at the state required minimum wage laws, I propose inspectors be paid a compensation rate of $15 an hour for their scheduled hours of 7 to 9 p.m., 14 hours, at a base rate of $210 plus $15 an hour for every hour that they should work after 9 p.m. to assist in seeing that all the ballots cast be properly counted and that we get the vote tallies to the clerk's office most efficiently as possible. The wardens I propose be paid $18 an hour for their 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. hours of 15 hours at a base rate of $270 plus $18 an hour after 10 p.m. should the need arise. If additional workers are necessary and available on short notice, I would recommend that we have relief workers assigned to precinct locations and polling locations rather than specific precincts so they could assist across the individual um, areas of the schools to see that the ballots are brought to the um, um, machine efficiently. New election worker training having been asked by the uh, both the select board and the clerk's office, I will be offering from 4.30 to 5.30 this Thursday, June 4th. And that is uh, my uh, recommendation, which I hope you all received. I sent you all a copy. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions? And, and what we'll do on this is, mindful of the advice with Mr. Leone, um, I will leave it to the incoming chair and uh, the select board office, the last time we uh, increased uh, poll worker salary was 2017 or 2018. It's something that's done within um, the select board office. So um, we'll definitely take action on that, but I'll, I'll leave it to the incoming chair um, to place it on either for a vote or if we just continue on doing it as, as we have done in the past. It's something internal. And the incoming chair will contact you, Mr. O'Connor, just to make sure we see this process through to the end. Well, my proposal was for, in effect, this election, which is Saturday. So I did have a discussion of the manager and he's very much in support of this. And, um, We've talked about this for a couple of days, but he's been very busy with other uh, responsibilities today. So I didn't get it on your agenda today to vote. No, you but couldn't get it on today. We have to have 48 hours notice, but right, just, exactly. we're, gonna no, no. we're gonna continue to handle this, Mr. O'Connor, as we've done in the past. Um, um, okay. We haven't voted on it before. It's been something that's been done internally, but again, I'll make sure the, um, Incoming chair um, is will make sure to follow up on this because I, I think you'd you'd find if this was an agenda item, um, would thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Um, next, um, Ms. Bird, Kate Bird. Madam Chair, just a moment while I uh, allow Ms. Bird in. Thank you, Attorney Heim. We can see you, but not hear you yet. Sorry, I, I don't know how to unmute. Okay, if you could just sit, say your name and address for the record. Yes, my name is Kate Bird, and I'm at 149 Brattle Street in Arlington. Um, and I would like to thank you for your time. Um, I sent a correspondence this morning, which uh, many of you have responded to very quickly and um, thoughtfully, and I very much appreciate that. And um, I would just like to take this opportunity to read my letter. Um, it's a letter of support for improved cycling conditions on uh, Arlington roadways. 
So as I, I mentioned in my letter, I've been a resident in Arlington for five years, and I'm writing this letter in support of Ms. Allison Seki and um, Mass Bikes effort to improve bike safety in Arlington. Um, so as I mentioned, both my husband and I are both avid runners and cyclists, and we rented in East Arlington for five years and recently purchased our home in um, the Brattle neighborhood in large part because of its proximity to the Minuteman Trail. Uh, I use this trail daily for exercising and commuting. However, since moving to Arlington five years ago and purchasing a bike, I've always had concerns about the safety of riding on town streets. Uh, I often commute towards Lexington on my bike and from the beginning was uh, upset at the intersection of the Minuteman Trail and Lake Street intersection as it is unsafe, ambiguous, and inefficient for cars, walkers, runners, and cyclists alike. And I cross that intersection multiple times a day in all of those capacities. Um, in 2015, I reached out to the town and was told it was being handled. Five years later, the intersection is nearly identical. Um, I have been tracking that and realized that there has been some progress made, but um, it was still disappointing that five years later, nothing has actually been built or substantially changed at that intersection. Uh, furthermore, last summer, I was commuting home eastward on the Minuteman and was crossing Mass Ave from the Uncle Sam Park in Arlington Center when I was struck by a car uh, they came up behind me and hit me at about 8 o'clock and then fled the scene. Um, I was very lucky in that I had no injuries or broken bones, but I did have an ambulance ride to the hospital, many x-rays, and about a year later, um, I still cannot lay on my stomach, and I'm still going to a chiropractor following up um, on injuries from that accident. Uh, furthermore, I was very disappointed in the follow-up, uh, trying to identify this, this driver who hit and then fled the scene. Uh, there was little to no um, effort made to track down the driver beyond uh, one or two social media posts by law enforcement. Um, so with this history and these experiences, I, I read with sadness and anger about the accident on Mass Ave in Appleton. It was revealed that that intersection had been identified as alarming as far back as uh, 2012 in a memo from the Boston Regional MPO. Um, and this falls into this pattern of slow response and inaction um, towards bike safety on the Arlington streets. Uh, I, I truly believe that improving biking conditions will help all citizens by reducing pollution, traffic, uh, opening up parking spots for those who truly need them, and providing physical and mental well-being through exercise, just naming a few, few benefits of this. Um, and I really hope that as members of the select board that uh, you continue to prioritize safety for those on bikes. I know steps have been made, uh, but I would like to see additional steps and further action there. Um, and I think that the recent occurrences really highlight the importance and immediacy of this need. Uh, I'd like to, again, thank you for your time and consideration in this matter. You're very welcome, and um, we do have two um, emails under correspondence received that came in under the open meeting law 48 hours in advance, and they do appear, and I've been um, responding as my colleagues have, that as we receive them, I've sent them to the select board office so they could at the very least appear on the June 8th correspondence received, as well as the incoming chair um, will work with... Um, the town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, um, and uh, coordinate with our transportation advisory committee, TAC. Um, so uh, we will keep this at the forefront. And uh, I thank you for contacting us and joining us tonight. Um, next, I have Galen Mook. And I apologize if I'm not saying the name correctly. I just want to let my colleagues, I'm being a little lenient with our previous speakers, um, not really sticking to the three minutes. So, <laughs> if okay, you could just, hi, if you could just say your name and address for the record. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Y yes. Okay, thank great. You. Yeah, my name is Galen, Galen Mook. Uh, so you, you got me great, Madam Chair. So thank you for that. Um, I'm actually a resident of Alston, Massachusetts, um, but I'm here to represent uh, advocacy regarding cycling in Arlington. Um, I'm the executive director of the Massachusetts Bicycle Coalition. We do statewide advocacy, which means policy work, funding, legislation, and broader picture stuff. But we work with local advocates, um, of which Arlington has many. 
and um, I'm a big fan of the work that um, the town has been doing, um, and ABAC um, in particular has been doing over the years to make um, cycling safer, to improve the conditions in the Minuteman and the roadway uh, junctions that we've seen some improvements. But I'm here uh, directly to talk about one of the specific dangers. To kind of follow up on Ms. Bird's comment, um, I do also want to thank you, Madam Chair, and all the uh, select board and staff for hosting this and allowing um, even non-Arlington residents to uh, speak out um, and to address the, uh, the board. So thank you very much. Um, the, uh, the reason I'm, I'm here is to bring to the forefront the uh, safety improvements that are so drastically needed, particularly at the three intersection junction right there at Appleton and Mass Ave. Um, it's been identified, uh, it's been even called out by CTPS and the Boston MPO for, um, for many years, this has been a problem for the city, so or the town, I mean, so I, I would urge you, the point of this talk, I guess, is to urge um, as quick action as possible and to activate the TAC and to engage with ABAC and the resources that the town has, in, um, including some resident planners who uh, are very active and very wise and care very passionately about fixing this. Um, I will ask the select board to really encourage the TAC to figure out what could be done in the most immediate terms because that intersection, that whole section of three intersections is just as dangerous today as it was on May 5th when uh, a crash took the life of Charlie Proctor. Um, Mass Pike's role here is to help facilitate that com conversation. Um, we have been in touch with the family and friends of Charlie to uh, help navigate the town structure in terms of advocacy. We attended the ABAC meeting last week um, and we received notes from the TAC meeting. So our intention is to work with the town and through the town procedures to make this as functional and ex expedited as possible. Um, I do also wanna point out that there is a resident um, a planner, Phil Goff, who is an East Arlington resident, who is part of the EELS um, coalition, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. So I thank you very much for the nodding of the heads there to um, take Phil's considerations very seriously um, and especially to think that they're obviously modifiable to um, to implement as fast as possible. And we've seen the town work quickly. Um, I was impressed with the MBTA bus lanes that the town was able to implement um, very rapidly um, through kind of unknown and uncharted uh, territories. So um, again, the, the dangers of Mass Ave, though there are many, this three section chunk is so obvious that there should and could be very quick implementation um, and so I urge you to really press tack to think of um, short and medium term in the most immediate ways of just getting um, safer infrastructure out there so that no family has to bear the tragedy of losing a loved one to unsafe streets. Um, I also wanna say that I do ride quite a bit through Arlington um, for commuting purposes, for recreational purposes and for errands. Um, I'm very appreciative of the work that the town has been doing and the um, work of the DPW. I'm very appreciative of the slow streets and the open streets campaigns that are concurrent right now. And I'm very, uh, view this very favorably. And I hope that the town is able to uh, take this request through the TAC and to work with ABAC and the advocates to um, really get something down. And to flag that I also wanna ask that the select board um, work with the family to think about what a memorial for Charlie might look like. In the past, um, in other neighboring towns, uh, we've installed uh, white memorial bikes with the agreement of the town. We did this last year with Lexington uh, for Kerry Coover, who was killed in a crash on the Minuteman. Um, this was a first for Lexington, and I understand that this is not a conversation that the town has had before, um, in particularly this manner. So I want to offer myself and my organization of Mass Bike as resources to help with uh, figuring that out. Um, and to fully uh, be communicative with the family throughout this process as well. So I thank you for the time and I thank you for your prompt attention here. And um, I appreciate that you're able to give me the platform to say this. Thank you, Galen, and, and, and thank you for your commitment to Arlington. Um, though you reside in another town, almost as good as Arlington, or city, Austin is it city or town. Um, and um, thank you for st staying involved with this. And I know myself and my colleagues, um, I have received over the weekend and uh, up until about 11 o'clock this morning have forwarded and responded a little over 20 emails from different individuals from Arlington, from Somerville, um, from Eels. Um, and I've been um, responding to each one. I 
probably another dozen came in during the course of the day. Um, and, and definitely uh, the last time Arlington unfortunately had a, a tragedy was when we had a, a bike race here and Nicole Reinhardt um, unfortunately was killed um, and uh, worked on um, getting a memorial with her family. And I t we tied into Kia and Subaru. So um, I definitely want to, when we get to that point, first we need to address the immediacy of the dangerousness and safety. So thank you. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next, I have Len Diggins. One moment, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Mr. Diggins, you should be all set. Thank you. Hey, I have a lot to cover. I'm going to talk quickly because I do want to stay uh, under three minutes. Hey, and so the first thing is I wanted, uh, I wanted to say that I really appreciate the letter that was sent out uh, by the town regarding what happened in Minnesota. Uh, and, and it was also um, very helpful to see the actions that the town has taken hey, to try to eliminate uh, racism. And furthermore, I want to um, point people to an article by Barbara Goodman um, that was in Your Arlington that talks also about the history of Arlington's and, um, uh, attempts to, to reduce racism. I mean, I, I actually wasn't aware of the fact that Arlington had, was one of the first six towns to participate in the Metco program, but there's a lot of other, infra a lot of other good history uh, about what Arlington has been working on in their article by uh, Barbara Goodman. So it's in your Arlington. I just recommend that people check that out. The second thing is uh, we are trying to get, well, we are making it possible for or more easy for people to do um, precinct meetings. And one of the things that the town has offered is uh, one of its Zoom um, accounts. And, and so I, along with Adam McNeil, are making ourselves available to help with that. Uh, and right now we have uh, Precinct 19 uh, that is going to have their meeting uh, on June the 9th. And I really want to emphasize that it's June the 9th. Right now it's on the town's calendar as June 2nd. Uh, so it's going to be a Zoom meeting from on June night, starting around 7.30, I think it's 7.30 to 9 o'clock. And uh, most precincts are declining to do it um, because there's a really little time between the election and town meeting this time. And also the town meeting agenda is going to be um, abbreviated. But Pat Hanlon, a uh, town meeting member from or Precinct 5, has suggested that after this town meeting, that we have these precinct meetings, maybe sooner rather than later, to let people know how what we're thinking about for the fall, the potential fall town meetings, and have people ask questions and process that because things are going to be very different, uh, and so it'll give residents and also town meeting members a uh, way to maybe get up to speed on what's going to happen. The third thing is that uh, transportation from Massachusetts, um, transit matters the Conservation Law Foundation and the MBTA Advisory Board have come out with a suggestion for the governance of the MBTA. Uh, as you may know right now, it is governed by what's called the Fiscal Management Control Board, and that is due to um, its life is ending. It's at the end of this current fiscal year, and so we need a replacement government structure. And they've come up with a really good idea for that, uh, but more so they want to get people to chime in with their legislatures to make it clear that we really need to have good governance for the MBTA. And that ties in with um, the letter that you got from the MBTA Advisory Board. Uh, I, I was going to put my, um, my um, name in the, the, uh, the ring for this one. Uh, I know the current uh, executive uh, director and the past executive director he, as a member of the, actually the co-chair for the Capital Investment and Investment subcommittee of the MBTA Rider Oversight Committee, I know these issues, but I, I see that there's a letter that's gone out to, to tack already on this, so I'll, I'll take that up with them. And so um, 20 seconds over, thank you very much, and I'll just say that um, uh, I live on um, 8 Windsor Street. Thanks. Hey, thanks, Len. Um, and yes, we do have that under <clears throat> correspondence received, which I'll just, again, when we get to that, speak to it briefly, and that'll be another thing for our incoming chair, along with our town manager, Mr. Chapline. Um, next, last person I have is Thomas Proctor.
Mr. Proctor. Hi there. My name is Thomas Proctor. I'm the brother of Charles Proctor, who was killed on May 5th at the corner of Southampton and Mass Ave. And We're very, very sorry for your loss. And I can tell you on behalf of my colleagues, um, all the letters written by so many of Charlie's friends and Allison's friends, and, and also a very heartfelt letter from Allison herself, we, we have all received. And um, I never knew Charlie, but I'm really sad I didn't because I've really gotten a sense of um, what a great man he is, he was, um, and so many good things he had done and was planning on he and his family and Allison doing in the future. So um, I, our heartfelt condolences and you have, been, you and your family and Allison have been in my prayers. So and that, that's not any of your time. So I'm sorry. I didn't need to jump in. Well, well, thank you very much. Uh, I, I just wanted to voice my support of, uh, and the rest of the family support for the recommendations of the ABAC, as well as uh, the, the work of, of Gail and Luke and Mass Bike. Uh, and want to urge, urge the, the select board to do everything in your power to make sure that these changes happen as quickly as possible. Uh, Definitely. And, um, we will stay in contact with um, you and your family uh, throughout this whole process, um, and especially um, uh, regarding some sort of memoriam. Um, we, we had done this before with Nicole Reinhardt's family, but that had to be 20 years ago. Um, so uh, fortunately, unfortunately, um, we're at that crossroads again. And again, I just want to um, thank you, your family, your friends for doing your best to celebrate, you know, the life that your brother Charlie Porter was and um, the testaments that we've heard from him and whatever we can do. Um, we, we're going to stay in touch with Charlie's family and Allison's um, through the addressing the dangerous intersection and the ABAC and TAC and all the other acronyms, but also, um, the, you know, the human factor um, because you're taking such a tragedy and, really funneling i don't know where you're getting the energy from to do this but really trying to funnel and make some good and make sure um that this wasn't just a tragic accident that just happened in vain so um please ex you know accept our condolences and we will be seen virtually maybe someday actually <laughs> uh face to face in a room um the proctor family and friends for some time to come so thank you so much thank you and that will end Citizens Open Forum. Um, I think that's all I had on my list. So now I will go to agenda item seven. Citizens Open Forum is closed. Agenda item seven for approval, storage shed at Russell Common Lot, uh, submitted by our Health and Human Services Director, Christine Bongiorno. Uh, Attorney Heim, is, uh, are you speaking to this or is Ms. Bongiorno here? Hold on one moment, I'm sure. Thank you. Stop. I don't see uh, Ms. Bongiorno on the uh, list of attendees right now. Um, trying okay. to make sure I'm not missing it. Um, hold on one moment, Madam Chair. I apologize mm -hmm. to folks at home. Just want to make sure that I'm not. Nope, that's fine. I'm glad you're doing that, and I'm not. So, Madam Chair, um, I'm happy to uh, to to try to speak to the very basics of this item again. I don't see. Ms. Bongiorno present in the list of attendees, and if Ms. Bongiorno is there, I'm sorry if I'm missing her. Oh, that's okay. Um, we have the request um, for the storage shed. Um, um, Mr. Dunn? Uh, I, found, I thought the memo was fairly straightforward, and I feel like I can move forward. I, I move approval of the request uh, to place the shed for the duration, I mean, with, in the, with the sunset of it uh, to expire uh, next year and to, to revisit the issue then. 
Okay, Mr. Dunn has made, made a motion to move approval. Do I have a second by Mr. Second. Hurd? No. Oh, okay. John can have it. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, any questions, any further questions or comments, Mr. Dunn? Madam uh, Chair, if I may? Attorney Hines, I'm sorry. Uh, Patsy Kramer has raised her hand. Uh, I don't know if she, I'm assuming to maybe speak about this particular issue. Sure, if you could invite her in as a participant. Thank you, Madam Chair. Patsy, you're on. Hi there. Um, it, it's just a part of the... Oh, can you just, I'm sorry, Patsy, just name and affiliation for the record. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, Patsy Kramer, 85 Columbia Road and manager of the Arlington Farmer's Market. Um, so the request for this pod is just part of the special circumstances that we have to put in place so that we can have the farmer's market this summer. And uh, we're going to have to uh, have a lot of extra equipment so that we can create a line for people so because we have to limit the number of people that can be in the market at any one time. And so there are a lot of cones that we'll have to have. Uh, and Christine thought that a pod made the most sense to have that available for the season. So that's, that's what it's all about. And the season kicks off when? June 10th and ends October 25th, I think, 28th, something like that. Yeah. Great. Um, we have a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Hurt. Um, uh, Mr. Carroll? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. oh no. Do I any have any comments? Or, yeah. No, no. This is this is very clear. Um, I, I I appreciate that we're going to find a way to to uh, continue holding the farmers market in a safe way, and um, I'm, I'm I'm happy to support this. And Mr. Hurd? I uh, no comments. And Mr. DeCourcy? No comments. Okay. On a motion to move approval by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Hurd. A roll call. Yeah. Attorney yeah. Hines. Yeah. Okay. Be right up. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes, Mr. Hurd. That's not my kids for the first. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> Mr. Hurd, that's not a roll call response. Yeah, you have to. It, yes. <laughs> Mr. Kuro. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Ms. Mahan. Yes, that's a unanimous vote. Agenda item seven is closed. We go to agenda item eight for approval. Arlington Farmers Market 2020. Uh, Patsy Kramer, our market manager. Um, I don't know if she wanted to add anything else unless Attorney Heim tells me there's a wave. So Madam, Madam Chair, I've kept her on since uh, she's on this agenda item as well. This is a related vote uh, in support oh. of the uh, farmer's market overall. Uh, I'll give Patsy the opportunity if, if she wants to actually speak a little more in depth about the sure. farmer's market. Sure. Yeah, um, the mar farmers markets. Uh, my my two and a half year old granddaughter is visiting, so you're here in the background. And can you just say your name and affiliation? Yes, for the record? Patsy I'm sorry. Kramer, uh, manager of the Arlington Farmers Market. Thank you. Farmers markets are considered an essential business and an important uh, source of food for people. And so it was important that we try to work out a way of making it happen, but also in a way that's safe for people. And so I've been very closely uh, collaborating with uh, Christine Bongiorno and Natasha Wadden to uh, make it, it work well for us. Um, and we're hoping to get it underway next uh, a week from this Wednesday. Thank you. Um, first, is there a motion by? Mm -hmm. Approval. Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Um, oh, SD, sorry. Um, any questions or comments, Mr. Hurd? No, I'm just excited to see the farmer's market come back. You know, there's a push right now to do things outside. So I think this is a great safe alternative for people that, that can get what they need at the farmer's market to not go to the indoor stores and to reduce congestion there. So excited to see it open up again. Thank you. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy? Yeah, I'm also happy to see it open and I appreciate the additional work that was done to uh, include the, the new parameters to, to uh, make it run safely this summer. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kiro? I said my piece. Thank you very much. And Mr. Dunn? 
Uh, you know, I often have a hard time getting to the farmer's market because the hours so are so hard overlap my work. Uh, but now, I'm, you know, working from home, I think I'm going to be able to make it more and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. Okay, so with that, we have a motion to move approval by Mr. Hurd, second by Mr. DeCourcy. Attorney Heim, roll call, please. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Kuro. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Ms. Mahan. Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Agenda item eight is closed. We move to agenda item nine, discussion and approval, economic recovery task force recommendations from our director of planning and community development, Jenny Raitt, as well as our economic development coordinator, Allie Carter. Um, I'm just going to wait if attorney Heim tells me if one or both um, are available. One moment, I believe I see Ms. Carter and Ms. Ray. And I will say as they're um, being promoted to participants that the board is in receipt of a memorandum from uh, our Director of Planning and Community Development uh, that we received I think it was today. I know we all have received it. I have it, have it attached. So, and it's about the task force recommendations. And so I will, if Ms. Ray could just, um, I unmute herself or we unmute her. Yes. And uh, name and uh, title for the record, please. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. It's Jennifer Ray, the director of planning and community development. And I am going to give a brief introduction um, and then hand it over to Allie Carter to um, wrap up. And I think we also may have a few individuals who might want to speak to this agenda item as well. Um, so we'll go from there when we get to that point. But just to give you a quick overview, uh, the task force has been meeting for, we've had four meetings, um, as well as a number of subgroup meetings by business sector. Um, Mr. Hurd is a member of the task force, which has been uh, very, very helpful. Um, and so Ali and myself have been organizing the meetings and the task force reps are from nonprofit organizations, the uh, members of the small business community, the chamber, other town departments. Um, the small business community is represented by all different business sectors as well as across the business districts in um, Arlington. And the goal is to ensure a safe reopening and healthy economic recovery in Arlington. Um, the meeting minutes and agendas have been, well, the meeting agendas actually, we're working on the minutes. Uh, the agendas have been, been posted and the materials that we've shared with uh, the recovery task force have also been posted online if people are curious, but also if people have questions, they can contact myself or Allie directly. Um, we've had these meetings and we've also conducted a number of surveys um, with both the town as well as the chamber um, with the business community and also with these conversations, we've um, determined sort of a number of different issues and also um, items that would be helpful with the re reopening efforts. Um, and so what we're sharing this evening is really those recommendations and also a framework that would allow uh, temporary ways to accommodate those reopenings um, by business sector. And sort of in the, the immediate, what we're looking at tonight is really, and what Ali is going to review are a few of the key recommendations that we think would be helpful to do right now. And also provide us with a uh, staff with, and some uh, boards with a framework in order to really um, allow us ourselves to really uh, enact these temporary measures to accommodate a reopening as soon as possible. As you mentioned in your previous item about the farmer's market, it's more important than ever to provide for outdoor options. And that'll become very important in, in particular uh, with the restaurants in our community. So I think with that, um, that's just a brief overview. I'm gonna hand it over to Ali, who is gonna talk about the recommendations that we've outlined in the memo, as well as our framework, um, including the dining, uh, the temporary outdoor dining rules and regulations. And then we'll take any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Carter, if you could just say your name and title, please, for the record. Yes, I am Ali Carter. I am Economic <laughs> Development Coordinator for the town. Um, so thank you all for your time tonight. So um, just to briefly summarize, um, so I've been really um, pleased with the impressive level of engagement um, with this task force. It's really everyone has been 
very involved in every meeting. Um, and some things came through messages pretty loud and clear. Um, so I don't want to belabor what was already in the me uh, memo, but um, suspending parking fee collections uh, for the f duration of phase one would just provide some consistency for the business owners and for um, consumers as well. Um, and that perhaps that could be uh, reconsidered um, for extension for, you know, each subsequent phase of reopening. Um, secondly, um, to suspend temporary signage permit review um, and to relax the, sign the storefront window signage requirements um, for the remainder of the state of emergency. One message we heard really loud and clear was that the, the business owners themselves really needed to um, set expectations for people clearly before they came into their place of business and that signage was a really inexpensive and effective um, way of getting that done. Um, and then there's, the, we talked about this briefly the last time I was um, here before you, but uh, it's an unfortunate reality that there are going to be a lot of businesses that don't make it through this. Um, and there will be some businesses that close and we, it is wonderful that we have a vacant storefront um, registration requirement in this town. Um, however, we wanna provide relief for landlords too, who are also feeling the pinch, not, you know, for folks who have had long-term issues, but for people who can demonstrate that their difficulty finding a tenant is directly related to COVID-19 impacts, um, we'd like to um, offer that as a um, recommendation. Um, just a little bit more um, about the seasonal outdoor dining and shopping opportunities. Um, we wanted, you know, this is really an unprecedented era of takeout and delivery and curbside business. And so curbside management is really more important than ever and it needs to be responsive to these new demands. Um, so we wanted to um, set criteria um, for finding ways to expand outdoor dining and shopping. Um, and I created a separate um, set of draft regulations that speak specifically to dining um, that are really largely based on some regulations that have already been passed in Norwood. And there are other communities in the area that are doing this as well. Um, and then we also wanted to create some guidelines for how we could evaluate um, the creation of 15 minute parking zones to facilitate, again, that major increase in pickup and drop off. So far we've been getting by fine um, with just suspending the parking, but now as retailers open up as well and more people are going out and doing things, um, we think we might need more intensive curbside management. So that is uh, the summary, happy to take any questions or hear your comments. Okay, um, I think uh, Ms. Wright said there were um, some other individuals also giving some information on this. I'll, Ms. Wright, is that correct? Um, I actually, Ali, I don't know if the individuals, I don't, I don't know who they are to, for, in order oh. to be called on um, um, and then to tell Doug. Mm -hmm. Okay, if, um, if you are involved in the economic task force um, committee and we're planning on speak tonight, if you could either raise your hand through Zoom or press stars nine on your phone, and I'll wait a little bit. So, Madam Chair, so far we have uh, Brian Restuccia, I apologize, Brian, if I got that wrong, uh, Beth Locke and Emily Shea. I believe Beth Locke and Emily may wish to speak. I'm not sure about Brian. Um, that was related to this agenda item. Is that what you're saying? All three of those uh, folks have their hand up. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll start with... Um, oh, Brian put his hand down. I'm sorry. Okay. So, so then I will go to Ms. Locke. Um, when you're on and we can hear you, if you can just say your name and affiliation for the record, please even though we all know you. 
Okay. Am I on? Yes. Hey, hi, everybody. I'm Beth Locke, Executive Director of the Arlington Chamber of Commerce. Um, and I just want to simply speak in support of um, these issues that Allie and Jenny are bringing before the board this evening. I am a member of the task force um, and have also participated in, so far, one of the focus groups that are um, aspects of this task force. Um, and, um, you know, I believe these are all things that are very important for the business community. I think there'll be other things that are coming down the pike. You'll probably see more requests from this group, um, but I really urge you to um, to take these to heart. And, um, and, and I just, again, want to speak in support of it. The task group um, is, is doing a great job so far. And I think as, as we get further into the phases, um, it's gonna become more and more, there's gonna be more and more work being done by this group. So thank you for letting me speak. And um, that is it from me. Thank you, Beth. And uh, I really wanna thank um, Beth Locke, as well as Kathleen Darcy from the Chamber of Commerce and many others. Um, you really have gone above and beyond not only for members of the Chamber of Commerce, but um, uh, other businesses who perhaps weren't aware or for financial reasons, you've um, really extended offering services to them, um, recognizing that they're just barely keeping afloat and surviving and sort of waiving the fact that they uh, don't have the membership status. So it's one of the things, again, that I really love, we all love about Arlington is, you know, when we take care of each other and, um, treat everybody the same. So, um, Ms. Shea, if you could say your name and affiliation or address for the record when we get you joined. And I see our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, has returned from the Finance Committee. Thank you, sir. And we are on agenda item nine. You make a better Hi. Hi. Am I up now? This is Emily, yes. Ray, owner of Kickstand, resident of Draper Avenue. And really just a quick um, agreement with everything Beth said and a big thanks to her and the chamber. They've done great things. And just to offer myself as one of the business owners who's on the task force, if you guys have any questions about some of these recommendations, I'm happy to answer them and also just reiterate how important things like the signage relaxation are for us trying to manage crowds and think about ways that we can reopen and get things going again. So really that's all I'm here to say. Thanks to everyone and offer myself if you have any questions about the specifics and how they affect us business owners. And thank you for really putting in the extra work to staying in Arlington and having a presence and um, I don't know how you're keeping afloat, <laughs> but um, Kickstand's a, a very beloved institution, especially not in Arlington Center, but in the entirety of Arlington. Um, so I thank you. So what I will do first is, uh, first, is there a motion, Mr. Hurd? Are we moving approval of the all the recommendations in the memo? Um, yeah, well, if you want to put that on as the motion, and then if someone wants to modify it or amend it along the way. Okay, so moved. Moved by Mr. Hurd. Is there a second? Second. By Mr. Hero. Um, questions or comments, Mr. Hurd? Um, just as a member of the task force, I think one of the things that certainly I've discussed and has been an issue for a lot of the building of the business owners is the parking. I think that's sort of a, one of the main ways that we can support these businesses. I know the ask was for phase one. I would almost just amend it and say to suspend the meter revenue indefinitely while we, the meters are there were put in place to create turnover and to create parking spaces you know i, I think it's going to be a while before the parking spaces are take all taken up that would require you know us to to re-implement the meters and i'm happy to you know hear my colleagues concerns on this but um, I think we could leave it to the town manager and the, you know, the people from the town that are observing the parking spaces to let us know when it's time to reinstitute the, the meter collection. But, you know, I do 
agree with all the recommendations that came forth from from that economic development task force. And if I could, since it was referenced, um, ask our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, any uh, comments or? I, I define with the vote of indefinite suspension with the board's understanding that we might be back soon to ask you to start it back up again, depending on how busy things become. Uh, and also just with the, the public statement that with, without the revenue, some of the nice things we've been able to do the past couple of years with flowers uh, in the in the center, we, we will we'll have to peel back on, right? Because we, we won't have mm -hmm. revenue. So I'm not, um, I'm not suggesting that that trumps needing to give uh, as much flexibility as possible. But I think an indefinite suspension is a, is a good idea. Uh, but, you know, if we're back a month from now saying, let's get it back up and running, I, I would ask you to not be surprised is all, all I'd say. Okay, so is that amenable, Mr. Hurd, to amend your um, motion to uh, indefinite suspension of the meters? Yes, so, so that will be reflected in the vote. And um, Mr. Kiro, you're okay with seconding that with the amendment? Yes. Yes. Um, Mr. Hurd, did you have any other questions or comments? I uh, know. Mr. Kiro? Yeah, I had three, uh, and I guess I'll start with the one that has uh, that uh, refers to the um, meters. Like I say, I'm I'm fine with the indefinite suspension. I realize one of the reasons we've done this is to avoid people having to touch the meters and having contact surfaces. So I'll one of my <clears throat> favorite topics: pay by phone. How close are we to with that? Because it feels like even when we bring them back up. That, that now more than ever, that would be an effective way to, um, to, to minimize the amount of uh, touching of those, those contact surfaces. Okay, whoever answers, if you can just say your name and title. Uh, Mr. Chapterlane, is that you? I think Allie can best answer, but I know I gave the go-ahead to the zones that they had designated for pay-by-phone just a couple days ago, so I, I think it's right on the doorstep, but Allie might know more. Yes, okay. we're very close. Um, we... Uh, we created the zones. Um, we have to do some final details um, that require the, the tre treasurer's office. Um, we have a meeting with them on Thursday. We're really just tying up the final loose ends on that. Okay, and Ms. Rada, Ms. Rada are you in agreement with that? Yes. Um, Mr. Carroll, I think you said you had a couple of three. Yeah, I did, I did. I did. No, that, that's, that's great. I mean, I've been eager for that anyways, but I think now more than ever, I think it's very important that we, that we um, institute that. Um, on parking, I, I agree very much with the, the uh, idea of designating uh, the, the 15 minute drop off pickup zones. I was, I was down in the center last night at the um, demonstration for a while, right in front of Trader, um, not your average Joe's. And um, there was a continuous flow of people pulling in and getting out for their pickup. And, and I, so I think it's, that's also an important part. The only other piece I, I um, just wanted to highlight is um, under the draft outdoor dining regulations, it does reference that the serving of alcohol and that the issuance of one of these licenses should not be construed as, as the ability to um, serve alcohol outdoors to even to license facilities without coming to us for a license. It, it was the, the thinking around that, that, that uh, businesses that wanted to avail themselves of that would have to come and go through the full, full process that we would typically follow for um, uh, the licensing of uh, outdoor serving of alcohol. Who would like to answer that? Ms. Carter? Or Ms. Wright? I'm, I'm happy to. Um, so the idea was a lot of that is controlled um, by the state um, and we didn't want to, you know, cross any lines. We were, when we drafted this, there were still, you know, the, the news that came on Friday, we didn't have that yet. So um, yeah, we thought we would be conservative on that score. Okay. Um, Attorney Heim, anything you wanted to either add or revise us when we move along and get to that point? No, I, I, I think it will be, uh, Madam Chair, Doug Heim, Town Council, I think it will be uh, valuable for us to try to coordinate 
and understand fully how the ABCC, uh, how the ABCC is treating this type of activity. And I also just note that Ms. Ray, Ms. Carter took a lot of care to make sure, just want to add a little piece, that we're not talking about um, increasing folks' capacity. Um, we're talking about giving opportunities that are being basically taken away from them by um, the, the current conditions. Thank you, Attorney Hahn. Uh, Mr. Kiro? Uh, that's all I had. Just thank, thank you very much uh, to Ms. Wright and Ms. Carter and all the members of the uh, task force uh, for all your work on this. It's important work. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. DeCourcy? Thank, thank you, Madam Chair, and, and thank you for all the work, uh, Ms. Carter and Ms. Wright and Mr. Hurd, uh, for being our designee in the, on the task force. Um, on, on the, um, just, just one thing on the, on the regulations and some minor um, potential change. Article two, section four refers to approval by the general manager. And I think that maybe it's more appropriate to call that approval by the select board office. Um, and so if we're gonna vote the regulations, I just wanna offer that as a, um, just a, a, a friendly amendment to the, um, to, to the reg proposed regulations. Um, and then the other, the other just point on the temporary or, or shorter 15 minute zones, what, I, what I've seen in, in Boston in the past month is um, just signs being put up on meters that basically override the meter and say five, it's actually five minutes in Boston, some areas, five minute retail zone. So that may be something to think about. And then the third um, thing, I just had a question on the, uh, once the um, remote pay or mobile pay is, is instituted, what, what platform is being used for that? I know the Passport is in Cambridge, Boston has its own system. I don't know if, if that, um, if, if it's also through the Passport system. Okay. Um... Whoever answers that, Ms. Raitt or Ms. Ms. Carter, Ms. Carter. Um, sure, uh, I'm sorry, should I say my name again? Yes, please, okay. for anyone on the phone. <laughs> That's okay, um, Allie Carter, Economic Development Coordinator. I just um, it, wanted to make sure I had the rule straight. Um, the company is called Pay By Phone, um, which is also what the service is usually referred to, but that's the company we're going with. All right. Are they in any other communities around us? They're in Concord, um, but I think one of the things that was attractive about working with them um, is that they're, they've partnered with the T. And so because we rely so heavily on bus service, there's a potential that someday that could be a platform for T payments as well. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. DeCourcy, um, uh, Mr. Hurd, do, would you like to take Mr. DeCourcy's friendly amendment under Article 2, Section 4 to change uh, the designation identifying the general manager and change that to the select board? Uh, yes, so I'm in. Okay. And um, uh, Mr. Kiro, do you still second that? Yes. Okay. Um, and I just want everyone at home to know my colleagues are aware of this. I try to go in a different order. So <laughs> somebody's not always the last to talk. Well, they, actually, I'm the last to talk. But, uh, Mr. Post, Madam oh, Chair. Uh, sorry. Um, Mr. Chapdelaine? So I, I've not pulled it up in front of me, but I know the general manager in Norwood refer, uh, refers to their equivalent of the town manager. And I just wanted to make sure Allie and Jenny weren't proposing something that would have streamlined the process to be able to give quicker approval to these businesses such that maybe the select board office or the board administrator or some other administrative staff was what you were aiming at with that section? Could I call on the planning director, Ms. Wright? Yes, Jenny Wright, the director of planning and community development. Yeah, I think that the appropriate um, amendment might be town manager or if you wish for it to be the select board, it would be the select board's office. Um, or administrator, I suppose, would be the other term. But we were intending for it to be a more streamlined, expedited process. That was the intention. Okay. Um, so, uh, Mr. DeCorsi, do you want to change general manager to select board office or I, something else? Well, no, I, I think select board office is appropriate here because the text of the section refers to the select board office. Okay. Okay. Um, 
who was I just starting? Mr. Dunn? Uh, no questions. Um, I think that these are all good steps forward, and I really appreciate the, the work that people are doing. And I think that uh, we're putting together a lot of flexibility to manage these, you know, these things that we certainly didn't anticipate when we wrote all this. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. And um, I want to take advantage of the opportunity to thank the planning department, thank our colleague, Mr. Hurd, who's our liaison, but um, our director, Ms. Raiden economic developer, uh, Ms. Carter, um, it's a little bit off the agenda item, but um, I've been so impressed in terms of, you know how much I email you all <laughs> and when I email you all and I try to say, don't answer me on the weekend, but you still do. Um, but I've really been impressed with the effort um, when we've come to businesses where the owner um, English isn't necessarily their first language um, and Imagine me walking through your business establishment and I start to tell you all the great things the town of Arlington can do for you. And it just, um, and usually um, it's been a, a daughter or a son or a niece or a nephew that makes the call with that business owner. And um, Ms. Carter and Ms. Raid um, have been not only fielding those sorts of calls, but whenever I throw something their way, they've usually already thought about it and have a protocol set in place. And if they don't, they make one. Um, so I, I'm really appreciative of that because I, like everybody in Arlington, want to do whatever we can to keep our businesses here to help them survive um, for the whole circle from the landlord all, all the way down to the business. So I, I want to take advantage of that opportunity because I know I have and my colleagues have been throwing a lot of stuff your way, whether it's through CDBG Cares 2 Act and um, and this initiative here. So I, I'm definitely appreciative of that. So with those amendments on um, indefinite uh, with uh, with the meters to be determined uh, by a recommendation by the town manager to change Article 2, Section 4 from general manager to select board office. Um, if there's no further questions or comments, I will call on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Uh, Attorney Heim. Madam Chair, we do have uh, one person who has raised their hand if you'd like to take public comment. No, we don't do that. Okay. Um, oh, because it's an agenda item. Um, it's if it was a public hearing, then we would. So, okay. um, thank you, um, Attorney Heim. Roll call. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Kuro. Yes. Mr. Dunn. Yes. Ms. Mahan. Yes. That's a unanimous. Uh, vote on uh, agenda item nine. And I, I just want to state because Zoom is kind of new to people, we're conducting the select board meeting as if we were in pre-corona. And when it comes to doing the business of the town and taking votes on individual um, items that are on the agenda before us, it's the five members of the board that um, are charged with uh, conducting that business um, as well as any staff um, that we need to have questions answered from. So um, I apologize if that's confusing to whoever wanted to um, speak. So with that, we go agenda item nine is closed. We go to agenda item 10, an update on our shared streets one week pilot. Shared streets, shared streets. Ooh, that's an odd thing to say. Uh, first, I'll turn to our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, and you can lay out who will speak. Sure. So I'm, I'm going to ask Dan Amstutz, our senior transportation planner, to walk through uh, what we've learned and what we've gathered from this one week pilot. But I, I do want to say I want to commend the board uh, for their leadership. And I want to commend Dan and Jessica from Neighborways Design. Um, I think we, we know Arlington's been a leader in sustainable transportation uh, with bike, uh, bicycle improvements, pedestrian improvements, uh, bus improvements over the past several years. Uh, but this one in particular, we were able to roll out our pilot uh, safely and efficiently before Somerville, before Cambridge, before Boston. And I think that's a huge credit to Dan, the planning department and their efforts and, and to your leadership and your vision. So uh, I want to turn it over to Dan, but I did want to lead by saying that. And you know what? I'm glad you said that because when I saw Cambridge just announced that they're starting in the middle of June on Harvard, Gardner and Magazine Street, the little competition cheerleader in me was like, eh. so I'm glad you noted that. So it's not just me. Um, so if we could turn it over, if you could just say your name and title for the record. Sure. Thank you. My name is Daniel Amstutz. I'm the senior transportation planner with the planning and community development department. Um, 
thank you, um, Adam, town manager, um, for that introduction. Um, I did have a presentation that was sent to you in advance, and I'll um, want to briefly go through it. Um, should I just share it from my screen? If you're able to, that would be great. Okay. Uh, you have permission? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow, I'm impressed. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, I'm making it full screen. Um, so thank you very much. I do want to um, thank the board, of course, for um, supporting this at the last meeting a couple of weeks ago. And um, we ran with the pilot for that uh, one week. And I'm going to go through that. Um, I'm going to try to quickly go through the evaluation piece of it so we can get a bit more towards the end and to the next steps. Um, I also want to start by um, giving compliments to um, the police department and the public works department um, and also the planning department staff and the town manager for all um, being very helpful and supportive throughout this uh, neighborways design and also the Lawrence and Lillian Solomon Foundation that helped actually fund the assistance from neighborways. Um, they did a considerable amount of work on this and I, I really appreciate that. So as, let's see. Okay, so um, again, like I said, I'll, I'll go through this fairly quickly. Um, this is one of the images from what the street looked like. We also shared some on social media. And I'm going to touch on these goals that we talked about at the, the previous meeting um, as we go through here. So the demonstration, it, it was really, we, we talked about it as a demonstration project. So it was in place for a week so that we could have a little bit of time for people to get used to it, to collect some data, um, and test the proof of concept as uh, how, how could shared streets work, because we haven't really done this kind of thing in Arlington before. It was active from about midday on Wednesday the 20th to midday on Wednesday the 27th, uh, so over the Memorial Day weekend. And overall, the, we had um, substantial public support for it. I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that later. And in the news item that we had about this, we also had a link to for people from around Arlington to nominate another street um, that they wanted to have some shared street intervention on. And we have, as of um, I just looked at it, about 123 nominations for other streets. So um, considerable interest, not just from the residents where we did the pilot, but also all around Arlington. Here are some images from the street. Um, uh, so there were definitely people, I went there a few times, so definitely people walking in the street um, or jogging with their kids. Um, you know, it wasn't like there was people everywhere all the time, but these are some nice images of, um, I think from Jessica Mortel from Neighborways who, who was out there several times and got some really good um, images of this, of just people enjoying the street, um, whether they're walking or biking or jogging. Um, this was, I sent you a little video, if you were able to look at it, that was great. There's a testimonial from um, <laughs> nice. a resident of East Arlington. <laughs> yeah, I love um, that. One of my favorite parts of this actually was that um, as, um, as she's talking that there's a family that comes up behind her and then goes into the Hardy Elementary parking lot. I thought that was a, a nice <laughs> sort of happenstance. Um, so where are we now? We've, so again, this is a timeline. We um, did some initial or, or neighbor ways kind of let us know about their, their um, opportunity with the Solomon Foundation. Um, and we, we spoke with the town manager and public works and the police department. Um, figuring out materials that we needed. We spoke with a variety of um, residents in the area or some residents that were very interested. And then we emailed local groups. We did lots of flyers, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, and just generally tried to do as much public outreach as possible. Um, and Jessica was, was on the street. She would talk to people often um, that she meant just sort of ask them how, how they liked it, what they thought about it. Um, we also had as part of the evaluation, the police department was collecting speed and volume data for us um, on Brooks Avenue um, at 52 Brooks, which I believe is between Chandler Street and Egerton Road. Um, and we have some before and after data for that too. So we are now at um, June 1st. So we, we did about 400 flyers. There's, so we about basically 200 before the pilot, 
or the, the week before we had the select board meeting last time. And then last week we did another 200 where um, they were put up on residences, uh, doorways, you know, just, just outside their door to tell them about the pilot. And then last week it was, we um, was telling people that it was, you know, it was over and we had a survey that they could take. And so I'll have the survey results in a moment. Um, we had emails sent out to um, you know, people we knew in the neighborhood who could um, send them out to their, um, whether it was their Facebook groups or, or other places where they could uh, put the information, social media. We did um, some posts from the town. Um, again, the survey to nominate streets, the installation, uh, video testimonial. And then we were looked at public comments, the speed and volume data. Um, there were some, there's some hand counts that were done by um, neighborways as well. And uh, our general observations, but there really wasn't, there wasn't crowding. That was, I think, a concern at the beginning. Um, we sort of talked about this as being possibly a alternate to the bikeway, but we realized quickly that it was very, very short. We didn't, you know, being overly or, or concerned about the crowding piece, we didn't put any signage on the bikeway to say, hey, come on to Brooks Avenue. We didn't want, you know, to end up with a bad situation. And in general, it's just not long enough. You know, it's only for about a quarter mile the Brooks runs from Lake Street to Varnum Street. So you can't really go very far. And most people, if they are exercising and want to stay on the same, you know, the same direction or, or on the same path for a certain amount of time that's familiar to them. Um, there were lots of families and young children in the street. We knew that this area um, of East Arlington does have a lot of families. Um, we did we, so this, again, was a learning experience. Some of the signs we put up were a little confusing on the Herbert Road approaches um, to, say, Milton Street. We had a road closed sign as opposed to one that would say, like, road closed to through traffic. And so those were some decisions we sort of had to make on the fly that would be different from what we would do now. And we, learned, we heard from the residents that those, some of those signs were confusing. Um, we did try to do some sort of mid-block traffic calming with just some traffic cones. Um, but it was interesting, um, Jessica from Neighborways has a small kind of speed gun, and she was clocking some uh, some drivers that were coming down the road and speaking to somebody. And, you know, even we, what we learned is sort of even a 25 mile an hour speed limit is sort of is high for trying to share a street with cars. Um, I think in, in other places where you have such situations, more like 15 to 20 miles an hour is, is a lot closer to what you'd want to have in that kind of situation. Um, we definitely observed that like at Lake and Brooks where we put some, some signs out and barricades, traffic went slow as they went through there, but overall very supportive and curious neighbors. Um, this is the speed and, and volume data. Uh, we took about two days worth of data before and then just about one day of data afterwards. Uh, you know, very, um, very interesting to learn. So the average daily traffic, you know, is about the average between the two days from the first, from the before data, and then the after data was one day. But definitely, this is really interesting. It showed such a, a very uh, substantial decrease in traffic, but also substantial decrease in the number of vehicles going over 25 miles an hour and over 30 miles an hour. And that is the kind of thing that you really want to see when you're implementing this type of strategy or, or treatment is to really see those speeds go down. And that was, you know, overall been a concern here a lot about traffic speeds being too fast. And so the fact that it, that it slowed people down for that substantially, um, I think is really impressive. Whoops, excuse me. Um, and then we took some active transportation counts. Um, you know, just looking at things like were people on the sidewalk, were they in the street, were they wearing masks, uh, just to kind of see how things were going. I would say that, um, you know, during the pilot, there was a market increase in people actually being in the street. I'd say observationally, just anecdotally, I think most people still kept to the sidewalks if they were walking. And that might be due to the, um, due to the speed factor of, of cars. Um, just briefly, the public comments before the pilot that you saw, we had about 50 responses, um, the vast majority in support of that. They, you know, wanting, need for safe space, lots of kids in the street, um, want less cars cutting through. And 
Um, we did, I will mention that we did receive some comments during the pilot. It was about 13 or 14. They were, they were all majority supportive, but it was generally very quiet during the pilot itself. Um, but when you put up the post-pilot survey, we received quite a lot of responses. Actually, as of today, I've, or this evening, I've got 200 responses on our post-pilot survey. This is what we put on the flyer that we put on everybody's residence, everybody's door. And, um, you know, three quarters of people that um, responded say they wanted to stay on Brooks. They want to expand it around town. Just a breakdown of that, um, showing here what the question was. Um, you know, would you support keeping the shared pilot, shared streets on place, excuse me, in place on Brooks Ave beyond the week long pilot? Would you like to see it expanded to other locations? Um, and then some changes that people suggested. Um, you know, I think the highest vote getter for this was expanding the pilot to other locations, extending the length of the pilot, improving the signage and messaging. Again, we, we saw that at first. And then the one at the top is reduce automobile speeds. So, you know, these, these things um, we definitely noticed when we were doing the pilot as well. And then here's a few quotes that um, I collected from the survey and um, we've seen great improvements in Brooks Avenue. It was a great pilot project, resulted in fewer cars. Um, it, you know, it's, this is really doable, it can exist. Um, some of this, I, I pulled this out uh, sort of purposefully to you know, highlight that some of this dovetails with what's going on or what the, um, the previous agenda item related to the economic recovery um, is in need to, you know, I, th I think there are, um, needs to do this kind of um, implementation, not a shared streets, but for sort of something similar you might, you might have seen in Brookline that um, on Mass Ave and other places where people are also, there's more people walking, but also still people trying to social distance. And that's, that's part of the next steps as well. Um, so again, some lessons learned. We need to improve the signage a bit and some of the, um, you know, public outreach. I think we did a lot of public outreach, but, you know, we could always do a little bit more um, doing some mid-block traffic coming and then volunteers. We did leverage some volunteers for putting up the flyers um, the second time. So, um, so some of this is kind of goes to the next steps, which I'll just get to now. So this, this was sort of the meat of the memo that I wrote is that there are sort of two primary directions that this could go in the future, seeing that it is very, very, um, very well supported and popular. What we did on Brooks was more of a neighborhood-based strategy. We consider a localized intervention where you close off certain or you make uh, certain areas sort of shared streets within a neighborhood, perhaps around a park or, or other sort of localized area. Something that we talked about as kind of a phase two would be the kind of connected street network where you actually do provide something that might be an alternative to the Minuteman. Um, to try to take some of the traffic off of that, but provide, you know, provide some safe street space for people to be able to not just exercise or recreate, but also to get to places, um, get to sometimes, uh, you know, on Mass Ave or get to uh, the Mystic River, for example, um, providing a connection from the bikeway to the Mystic River. You can take the Alewife Brook pathway, uh, but that is, you know, all the way on the Cambridge line. And then the other side of this is a commercial area strategies where you, we may end up with hot spots where there are a cluster of businesses that want to open with a cluster of restaurants, for example, and people need to wait outside, or we might have situations where there are, you know, a number of them want to have outdoor dining and, and need to have that for their um, businesses to survive. But it's, it's difficult because of the, um, because they are clustered like that. So sort of thinking about how to do that um, within the main commercial areas, not just Arlington Center, but whether it's East Arlington or Arlington Heights. And then streetscape corridors, again, is, is a bit more of a corridor type approach. I mentioned um, Medford Street um, between, the section between Mass Ave and Chestnut Street might be one other uh, a place where you do have a number of restaurants or businesses clustered together where you might just sort of slice out a place where um, you have some either outdoor dining or, or places where people can um, more easily move around one another. So um, what, we're, what we're looking for, what we're seeking is an approval to develop a framework to um, create some criteria for these, these 
different, uh, these two different directions, essentially. Um, we don't have any, I don't have a specific um, location for these at the moment, but the idea is to actually create some criteria to, because we have received so many nominations as well for shared streets and kind of understand what would actually work. Um, so that is, uh, that is what we're looking for to kind of uh, move into a similar direction with the economic development uh, recovery is to, um, again, move forward, create some criteria so that we can um, start moving on this. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you for all the um, effort, you and many others, and um, obtaining the, uh, was it Lilliman Solomon Grant? Am I saying that right? Lawrence and Lillian Solomon Foundation. Yes, but that was really um, piecing, piecing everything together. Um, first, is there a motion to receive as well as to approve and or request the development of a criteria framework by So moved. Is, done? is there a second? Second. Okay. Seconded by Mr. Kiro. Um, uh, Mr. Chaplain, anything before I ca start calling on my colleagues? No, just a, another thank you to Dan. And again, well, we're, we're not looking for any adoption of a, another neighborhood tonight, but rather just uh, the, you know, the, the, the go ahead to, to keep working on it and come back with some proposals very soon. Okay, um, Mr. Dunn, any questions or comments? Uh, I got good feedback uh, from some email and uh, I think it was a good program and I, I, I support it continuing in the future. Do you have any comment uh, about the fact that Arlington beat Cambridge and something else? No, um, Mr. Carroll. Um, yeah, thank you for the work. I, I actually went down to take a look at it, but I, I went down, you know, relatively early in the morning on the, on the uh, Memorial Day weekend. So uh, I, I guess a lot of people hadn't rolled out of bed yet, but um, it, it, I'm glad to hear um, that, it, that it was such a success. But j just to clarify, I mean, you, you are only looking for approval f to develop the framework. You're, you're not looking for a specific extension of this pilot this time, or, or are you? Um, Mr. Amstutz? Uh, thank you, uh, Daniel Amstutz, Senior Transportation Planner. Um, not at this time. We have some ideas of how it might be extended or how we might move in um, a direction for East Arlington and Arlington Heights, um, but we aren't at a point of um, sort of having that idea fleshed out. And you know, before moving forward, we, we do want to um, be able to start – Thinking, you know, thinking about how we will uh, do our public outreach to the residents and sort of what streets it might take. Um, doing a longer sort of connected street, uh, one of the options would be, um, you know, one way of doing it and would require some uh, good public outreach for that. Mr. Carroll? Oh, through you, Madam Chair. So I understand that Brooks is not coming back up but with, with this until we have that framework. Mr. Amstutz? I mean, there was a lot of support for it, but that's, um, that is not what we are asking for right at this time. Okay. Mr. Thank Carroll? you. Thank you. No All further set? questions. Um, Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, thank you, Mr. Amstutz for uh, putting this in place with the, with the team. I, I live near there, so I visited it, um, walked down it a couple of times, and, and um, I, I think the pilot was very successful. Um, and I also want to commend you on the, the nominate another street because I think that's a great idea. There's so many different areas in town, whether you look at it for commercial activity or, or just connecting, whether it's to the bike path, whether it's over towards the Mystic River. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunities there. Just one comment on some of the feedback you got, and, and this is partly based on personal observation, um, driving on Lake Street. Um, and, and that did have to do with signage. And, and if you do continue um, using uh, Brooks for, for, for the shared street, um, I think you, you may want to consider having more signage on Lake Street so cars really know what they're getting into. Or um, we discussed last meeting possibly moving it down, the start of it down towards Chandler. And that's particularly if, if uh, once school is back in session, if you're, if you're going to use that program because I saw two near misses on, on Lake Street. One car 
was heading down towards Route 2, took a left, realized that it was a shared street, and stopped and almost you know, oncoming traffic. It, it, it wasn't a near miss, but it was, it was close enough to be a concern. And another instance was a car heading up towards Mass Ave. Again, wanted to take the right, realized it couldn't, and the car behind it stopped short. So it's, it's. Uh, I, I think it was a great idea. I think I think the pilot was great. Um, but I think there are tweaks here or there. But I, I know you are taking that into account. So uh, thank you. And, and um, Mr. Hurd. I just want to thank Mr. Amsitz for his work on this. Um, I'm excited to see the project continue to develop. I think there's a there's a need for it around town. And I'll have to check the list of nominated streets to make sure that my street's on there. Because so I'm excited to bring it up to the heights. So, Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Um, my question, um, I, get, I think to Mr. Amstutz, or perhaps our town manager, is when we're developing the um, criteria framework, um, am I correct to understand that there will be a business criteria as well as a residential uh, do you see both frameworks? I mean, to me, it seems like there needs to be some kind of deviation on that. But is it, so are we authorizing one overall cr criteria framework for business and residential or two parallel? Um, Mr. Chapterlain? No, I think if you vote, uh, if the board votes affirmative tonight, you're asking us to come back with um, a framework or frameworks that look at both residential and connections to commercial uh, corridors as well. Okay. And... Um, I definitely want to move forward on this uh, with all the energy that you all have that, um, I, you know, we got the outreach out, got the pilot program up and running, you know, got the feedback. Um, but I know that lots of um, residences, I, I did go down twice during the uh, pilot program to uh, pay homage to Ms. Rowe at the corner of Herbert and Chandler, um, socially distancing as a chair. She has set up right in the front lawn. Um, and I did observe it, um, it was on a Saturday and I could see, you know, lots of families out. I tried not to engage them because I didn't want them to say, oh, I'm trying to go on a walk and Mahan's <laughs> coming over. But if they came over, I did speak to them. So I definitely would love to see this more um, in Mr. Hurd's neighborhood, other neighborhoods, but also a parallel one um, for the businesses. Um, because um, as Ms. Carter and Ms. Wright pointed out previously, unfortunately, we are going to probably lose some permanently. Um, and whatever we can do just to let them survive and keep afloat, um, this is one way that I think that will really help. Um, Mr. Amstutz, did you have anything you wanted to add to that or something you can tell me that's coming down on the uh, business side? Um, <clears throat> it's good to be Daniel Amstutz, Senior Transportation Planner. Um, I think the... Um, the purpose of the, the business side or the sort of commercial area was to make sure that that was included and not this, this didn't end up sort of being just a residential sort of program. Um, one of the, I, I think, you know, one of the ideas that we started with was sort of something the similar to what is being done in Brookline on, I think, Longwood Ave and a few other, uh, a few other streets where they kind of extend the sidewalk. And it's, it's very, it's kind of similar to what is being looked at for the restaurants in, in terms of um, you know, having outdoor seating and, and so on, or it's a, it's a similar concept using similar type of um, interventions. Um, but at the same time, there's, uh, you know, there's more people sort of anecdotally, you can see more people that are bicycling people that are walking on Mass Ave are, you know, from my own, I, I live in Arlington and, not very far from Mass Ave, so I end up on Mass Ave and I see people walking into the parking lane, into the street pretty commonly just to social distance from one another because they're, even though this, the sidewalks are fairly wide, you, um, the traffic isn't that, isn't, isn't, still isn't quite as high as it used to be. And so there's ways to get into there, but it, it does, still doesn't feel very safe when um, people are still driving pretty fast. So we wanted to make sure that that was um, still available. That, that was also part of this. It didn't just end up being more of a residential area program. Uh, I'll also say that the um, uh, Chief Flaherty went down there, uh, she said a number of times and was very impressed by it. You know, we didn't have any dedicated police presence here. We didn't we wanted it to be more kind of self-enforcing and we found that that was being um that was working pretty well and um 
Mr. Rademacher from the uh, Department of Public Works is very helpful and he was uh, impressed with the demonstration as well. Thank you. Um, I'm excited and uh, what I'll do is after we take this vote, I'll leave it to the town manager and the incoming chair to uh, when it gets to the point and it needs to come back to the board for a vote. Um, we look forward to seeing the frameworks, hopefully. So on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Carroll, Attorney Heim, roll call, please. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Mahon? Yes. And that is a unanimous vote on agenda item 10. Item 10 is closed. We now go to correspondence received. We have a piece of correspondence from Denise Curley of Mass Ave regarding the extremely dangerous intersection at Mass Ave and Appleton Street, as well as uh, from Acting Executive Director of the MBTA Advisory Board, Brian Kane, um, regarding Arlington's designee to the MBTA Advisory Board. Um, Mr. Chapdelaine, when you were at the Finance Committee meeting, we did have, um, I believe, three or four people who spoke under Citizens Open Forum, uh, including um, Charlie Potter's brother, and the woman sitting next to him didn't speak. It might have been um, a sister or a relative somehow. Um, just talking about um, letters that had come in, and I noted that uh, members of the board, starting from Friday afternoon all weekend, had been receiving, um, asking for this to be on the agenda. And I um, did some personal, like to Charlie's partner, Allison, I sent a first a personal email, but then I sent the email that says, you know, forwarding it to the select board's office to appear at the next uh, select board meeting, at least under correspondence received. And again, I'll leave that to the incoming chair because um, I didn't want to get into an explanation with all of them about open meeting law, 48 hours. I just did that. And as well as um, under citizens open forum um, regarding correspondence from the MBTA advisory board, um, the, Acting Executive Director reached out to myself and Mr. Chapdelaine, the town manager, indicating that Arlington does have a seat on this MD MBTA advisory board, uh, sort of set the parameters of what it would involve in terms of uh, time commitment. Um, and my feeling is if we have, even if it's an advisory board uh, position, especially on the MBTA, um, we should take advantage of that. But um, I was talking with our town manager about whether Mr. Diggins, um, Mr. Chaplain, Mr. Diggins did volunteer that he'd be willing to serve on this. Um, my feeling is and that may be the case. It should either be a member of the board and or uh, a designee of the board, perhaps out of planning. Um, but Mr. Chaplain, have I sort of encapsulated what we've been going back and forth on? Yes. Discussing? Yeah. Would you like me to start with um, uh, item 11 and talk about 12 or? Um, first, if I could have a motion from one someone to move receipt. So moved. Moved by Mr. Corsi. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Dunn. Uh, Mr. Chapdelaine? So on, um, I'll take 11 first and then go to 12. I'm, I'm sorry that I missed um, that I missed the Citizens Open Forum in regards to the topic of Appleton Street, but um, I did want to share that I've been speaking with the chair uh, as well as the chair of TAC. And what I'd like to propose is that at the next meeting of the board, we have two agenda items. One specifically in regards to the placement of a memorial at the intersection as has been requested. And then a second agenda item to create a special design review committee to look at both short-term and long-term improvements that can be made at that intersection. There's been short-term and long-term improvements already recommended by ABAC uh, that have been forwarded to myself and other staff and, and I, perhaps the board as well. So I think if we put together um, uh, sort of a, you know, we won't call it a task force. I think a design review committee is the way to call it. We can get representation from TAC, from ABAC, the planning department, the police department, engineering, as well as residents to take part in that and quickly start to take a look at this. So I will be asking the board to create that committee uh, next week as part of an agenda item in, in relation to, uh, to this matter. And the, and the chair of TAC thinks that's a good idea. I did hear back <coughs> that, um, that matter today. And if I could just let you know that one of the people under, and I apologize for interrupting Mr. Chapdelaine, under Citizens Open Forum, uh, I think he said he was from Mass Bikes. He lives in Austin, Galen Mook. 
um, that he has been working with ABAC um, and or TAC and indicated his willingness to consider doing that. And I said, we'd, we'd certainly continue to take him up on that offer. So I apologize for interrupting. Of course, no, no, please, please. Your, your meeting, right? Uh, <laughs> well, well, for now. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, on, on the second item, I did talk about this with uh, Ms. Rate, and we both agreed that with Mr. Amstutz spending a lot of time at the Metro, uh, Metropolitan, uh, geez, Metropolitan Planning Organization meetings, uh, where large amounts of transportation f uh, funding are funneled through, that it wouldn't be the best use of his time to also go to the MBTA Advisory Board. But it sounds like, given what you shared, Ms. Mahan, that if we put this on as an agenda item, either a, um, a board member or potentially another designee, uh, maybe from TAC, or you know, we could request for citizen volunteers, depending on whether or not a board member wants to serve. Okay, and, and what I'll do is, um, I'm not sure um, if I did this, someone waved the hand to say, yeah, I got it. But I did ask Mr. Kane from the MBTA Advisory Board exactly what the commitment would be. And he emailed back, um, that it's about three or four meetings a year and some other particulars. So I don't see anyone waving. So I don't think I forwarded that second email um, on to, I'll have Ms. Reedy do that in the morning. So my colleagues um, can look at it. And after June 6th, the newest or two newest um, members of the select board can also view that. And I'll leave it to the incoming chair um, to put that in as agenda item to see who we um, put on as our designee. Um, any, okay, first, um, with who made the motion? Um, any questions or comments, Mr. DeCourcy? Uh, no questions. Uh, Mr. Dunn? All set. Mr. Hurd? Nope. And Mr. Carroll? I look like a wise, wise course of action for these. Thank you. So on a motion to move received by Mr. DeCourcy, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Attorney Heim, roll call, please. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Ms. Ma? Yes. It's a unanimous vote. We now go to new business. So starting to my virtual left, Attorney Heim? No new business, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Uh, our town manager, Mr. Chapeline? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I primarily want to share uh, a quick update and thanks in regards to the upcoming election. So the update is that many, many residents, as we had hoped, uh, have returned their postcards and uh, we are now turning around those ballots and getting those ballots back out to folks. Um, but thanks comes in that uh, the clerk's office alone um, was not able to keep up with the postcards. No, no surprise and no shame on them at all because of the, the, the sheer quantity of postcards that returned. I understand there was somewhere between three and 4,000 postcards as of Friday afternoon and I'm sure more were collected uh, on Saturday and today. So we had staff from the select board's office, from the town manager's office. Uh, we had volunteers come in, uh, Timor Yantar, the chair of the Capital Planning Committee, Naomi Greenfield, former co-chair of the Arlington Human Rights Commission, volunteered to come in and stuff envelopes. Uh, and Sandy Pooler, the deputy town manager, was leading the charge with his partner Margie on Saturday in town hall, working with the clerk's office to stuff envelopes. So we really have, um, we, this has become an all hands on deck uh, type uh, type matter to make sure that we, uh, you know, we manage and operate this election as safely and effectively as possible for this Saturday. So just a, a big thanks to everybody to the clerk's office, select board's office, town manager's office, everybody that's making this happen. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. That's all your new business. That's all I have. Okay, Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just two things briefly. Um, first of all, and I, I know other members may want to do this as well, but I want to uh, recognize Mr. Dunn, first of all. This, this is his last meeting on the, on the board, and uh, thank him for the additional time that he spent since, since April, but also for his nine years of service to the town as a, as a member of the select board. And I, I first got to know Dan um, before his membership on the select board as we both served on the finance committee. And, and one thing... Uh, about Dan, it, both on the FinCom and, and on the select board, and even in just the, the one year that we served together, he always found a way to, to look for ways to, to, to find consensus and achieve consensus among the group. And, and uh, that was um, evident in, in all the work, Dan, that you did for Minuteman. Um, we have a new Minuteman High School because you led the charge um, to, to update and revise the regional agreement, and, and you did it 
in a way very few people could do. So um, I want to thank you for your service and, and, and thank you. Um, we're only a year together on, on the select board, but we had a routine after every meeting, Dan, Mrs. Kropelka and I would always leave the, the chamber, take the elevator and walk out to the parking lot and uh, just review the day's activities. And um, you, you know, those were, those, those were good times. So um, I know you've said that you're going to stay involved and, and I'm, I'm sure you will. So thank you so much. Um, second thing, Madam Chair, is I want to thank you as a, as a new member of the board. You're my first chairperson and, and thank you for all the, um, the leadership you provided, all the tips that you gave me. And, and when I had questions, you were there to, to answer them, to reach out on different things. And in the, uh, the modern era of the select board, you, you served the, the longest term as chair given this, this extra time. So, so thank you so much for that. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Um, Mr. Hart? Mr. Hart? All right. Am I unmuted? Yep. All right. Similarly, I just want to, in his, even though we got to have him for a month or so more than anticipated, I want to thank Dan for his years of service to the town, both on the select board and the other, the numerous committees that he's been involved with. He's always been a voice of reason on the board. And uh, whenever I had a point, if I looked over and I saw Dan nodding up and down, I knew that I, that I was on the right direction. So I thank you for that as well. And even though you're not going to be a panelist at the meeting anymore, I do look forward to, I know you'll always be involved and I can look forward to continuing working with you on issues that are facing the town in the next few years. Then to our chair, thank you again for your leadership this year. It's been an unprecedented year in the town of Arlington for many reasons. And I know I speak on behalf of many, many residents that, you know, with you at the helm, we always felt in control and you did very well at keeping the, the citizens informed, you know, via Facebook or via email or through our meetings. So thank you for your service. I don't anticipate that this will be your last meeting, but it, is, it has been a pleasure working with you this week. I mean, this year, rather. <laughs> Every and, day uh, is like a year, so I get it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, then I just didn't want to... I'm not generally one to read from my script here, but you know, over the past week, the country has really been torn apart by the senseless death of George Lloyd um, by actions of the Minneapolis Police Department. Um, this happened because the officers were used extremely excessive force on a defenseless on our man. The officers, rec the officers' reckless disregard for human life was disgusting and the officers must answer for their actions. I do want, I want to thank the town manager, Chief Flaherty and the numerous department heads for immediately condemning the officers actions. This behavior flies in the face of the community policing model that Arlington has developed with the Arlington Police Department. I did, I attended the vigil last night with Selectman Currow and I, I really was impressed by the peaceful nature in which the residents of Arlington stood up to injustice and made their voices heard. We have a long road ahead of us, but I look forward to working with the town staff and residents to do our part to improve race relations. And then lastly, I know it's been spoken a few times in this meeting, but in relation to the unfortunate death of Charlie Proctor, I just wanted to extend my deepest condolences to the family of Charles Proctor, who was struck and killed on his bike back at the beginning of May. It's a true tragedy to lose any life, but to lose a life so young is horrific. So, and we as a town you know, will take these concerns expressed by residents very seriously. And I know in the immediate future, we're gonna take steps to address all the issues that have been presented by this matter. Um, and then, my real last one, sorry, I had one more, was I, it went somewhat unnoticed this year because of everything going on, but I do want to, again, thank Jeffrey Chunglo for uh, his Memorial Day celebration that we had. Me, Jeff, Father Mark, and Adam were up at Town Hall, and, you know, in the midst of the pandemic, it was hard to properly honor those who are fallen soldiers, particularly those from Arlington, but Jeff 
did so in a way that really did brought as much respect to the the ceremony as was possible under the circumstances. So I just wanted to thank Jeff for that. And that's it. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Carroll? Uh, th thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I think like my colleagues, I have a lot on my mind, uh, but maybe mix up the order a little bit. So first, I, I'd like to thank you, Madam Chair, for your service chairing the board through 14 tumultuous months that included some of the most difficult debates in my tenure here, a great victory for Arlington High School and our overall finances, a crushing public health and economic crisis, and a two-month extension of your chairmanship that you neither expected nor asked for. You've represented the board well, particularly with your constant updates during the COVID-19 emergency. This weekend, Arlington High School seniors will officially graduate. Uh, congratulations to all of our AHS grads and our other residents who are completing their studies at Arlington Catholic and other high schools and colleges under such unusual circumstances. You graduated in an extraordinary time in history, marked by moments of great human achievement, such as this past weekend's SpaceX launch, but overshadowed by even greater tragedy and challenge. Our news sites carry dueling maps. Some maps illustrate the deep political divide that grips our nation. Others show the spread and contraction of the coronavirus pandemic and its associated death toll. The newest maps show the spread of protests in states of emergency. And that our country burns and cries out in grief and outrage over yet another despicable act of inhumanity against our black brothers and sisters. As the chair referenced, Arlington became a dot on that map this past weekend with peaceful protests over the killing of George Floyd and others before him by police officers who violated not only black bodies and black dignity, but also their own oaths to protect and serve. Mr. Hurd and I, as he mentioned, attended last night's vigil, which was organized by and drew disproportionately large participation from members of your generation graduates. This gives me some measure of hope in a time when hope is in short supply. Against this backdrop, on Saturday, Arlington will make history as voters elect one or possibly two leaders of color to this board, a first not only for the select board, but for any town-wide office. This milestone is the culmination of a long path of progress leading from the appointment of Anne Mahan Powers and election of Peg Spengler as the first women on the then Board of Selectmen, the subsequent breaking down of barriers of religion and sexual orientation. And frankly, I was surprised when someone told me that I am actually the first select board member with an Italian surname, Ms. Mahan's <laughs> Sicilian roots notwithstanding. <laughs> I've, I've not confirmed this, and I'm happy to cede the superlatives to others who have overcome tangible challenges in life. One week from tonight, we will come together as a newly constituted board and we will have no time to lose in uniting to tackle the problems facing our town. It won't matter who supported whom or where we landed in the factional divide that has taken root in our community, pushed apart people of goodwill and strained friendships, frankly. The voters will render their verdict and our board will continue to benefit either from Ms. Mahan's commitment to constituent service and or Mr. Diggins' community building and solutions oriented focus, and or Ms. Healy's great gifts of charisma, compassion, communication skills, and character. What we will not have is you, Mr. Dunn. You've brought all of these qualities and more to everything you've done. You know, when I was first approached about running for the select board, one of my first reactions was, I am not nearly as smart as Dan. Um, and time has proven this observation to be true time and again. Dan, I know that tomorrow evening you were supposed to be honored by the Rotary Club as a Paul Harris Fellow. It's an award that's well-deserved, and I'll look forward to seeing your name on the plaque in our chamber, um, if we ever see our chamber again. <laughs> <laughs> now, I first encountered you, Dan, as a young libertarian town meeting member, blogger, candidate for House of Representatives, and finance committee member. And it was quite a road from there to your first board vote in support of the 2011 override, your leadership in advancing subsequent tax measures to meet the needs of our students, and your co-chairmanship of last year's successful Arlington High School debt exclusion and override campaigns. 
You'll be remembered for these and for many other achievements, including representing the case for passing the Trust Act or the Sanctuary Town Resolution in a newspaper debate with opponents, presenting the case for adoption of the Community Preservation Act at town meeting, and indisputably your crowning achievement, negotiating a new district agreement for Minuteman High School. This last achievement built upon the work of others like Mr. Tosti, Mr. Foskett, Mr. Chaplain, Mr. DeCourcy, and Ms. Scheffler. But it was you who pushed us across the finish, finish line, spending endless hours in complicated multilateral discussions with leaders from other towns in the Minuteman District and earning their respect and agreement to a new framework. As a result, Arlington's voice in the governance of the district has been greatly enhanced. We're assessed in a more fair manner. The students of Minuteman have a new state-of-the-art building. And where Minuteman once relied significantly on out-of-district enrollments, students from within the district now flock to the school to the point that there's a waiting list. This is just but part of your legacy, Dan. You did all this while balancing extremely demanding professional and personal responsibilities. Your worldview has been palpably inspired by your life experiences, including your family's long history in public service and public safety. Your identity as a member of Arlington's bicycling community, regular user of transportation, uh, public transportation, and electric vehicle aficionado. And of course, your undying devotion to our beloved Red Sox. And I want to apologize publicly for making you dress up in silly costumes for the Arlington Education Foundation Trivia B, and thank you for being a good sport about it. As you leave, I only, I have, only have a few requests. Please don't be a stranger come back and visit us once in a while. Please continue to grace us with your advice and counsel, and please save me a seat on the floor of town meeting. Good Lord willing, I'll be joining you there soon enough. <laughs> so Godspeed, my friend, and thank you. Thank you very much. And Mr. Dunn. Um, thank you all for the kind words. Um, I actually have two things first. Uh, one, long range planning, Matt, uh, for my last long range planning meeting, which I chaired, uh, and uh, the town manager review and uh, Sandy reviewed a, a several budget options for the proposal and uh, and uh, the superintendent also outlined some of the uh, cuts that they're making for the upcoming budget. And then there was a lengthy discussion about what to do for subsequent year budgets on, on the paper. And I think uh, overall it was generally not quite consensus, but it was generally felt that uh, we needed more information before we started planning for FY22 and FY23. But uh, I think as I said at our last meeting, this is, is the time where we have a long range, we have a multi-year plan with a real problem early in the plan, which has never happened before. And uh, that's gonna, that has potential to be difficult in ways we've ne we haven't experienced with our previous multi-year plan. Uh, my second thought was I wanted to thank Sue Scheffler for her service on the Minuteman sc uh, School Committee. She's informed us that she's not, uh, Looking to be reappointed, but uh, you know, talk about you talk about tough jobs and uh, cross community, and you know, like the number of different people and different agendas that run around uh, in the in the Minuteman uh, group. And I really thank her for her service, and I look forward to you know hoping to recruit somebody for to do it again in the future. Um, finally, uh, it has been an honor and a pleasure to serve on this board. I really uh, am. am I, I really am honored that the voters have, you know, put me here, and I really have enjoyed doing it. I'm, uh, and I'm proud of the work that I've done, and I'm proud of the work that we've done, that we've all done. Uh, I want to thank those voters first. I, I've got a lot of people to thank, but uh, and I'm not going to name too many because if you name them, then you forget them. Um, so, <laughs> voters, I really, I mean, thank you for your trust. Thank you for your hope. Um, my campaign volunteers who put me here. You know, you don't get elected by yourself. You get there because a lot of people work in ways you just look at them you say why are you doing this and uh, it's very humbling and i really appreciate the effort and air um, and sweat that they put into it um i thank you all my colleagues uh you know i have learned something from absolutely every single one here you know there's you there are times that you think you know exactly what's going on and then someone says something and you say wow i didn't i did not do it and that it, i did not get that and there really is a power of uh, there being a committee, a, a board, as opposed to uh, any one of us. Um, and that thank uh, extends to uh, Kevin, you know, and uh, also, of course, to uh, Annie and Clarissa, who were uh, on the board when I, when I started. 
Um, thank you to the town employees, um, the ones who are here, Adam, who I regularly enjoy our conversations and I'm really uh, gonna miss those. Um, uh, Doug, thank you for all your help. Uh, uh, um, Marie, of course, for, you know, Marie keeps, uh, keeps you protected as a selectman and I, I really appreciate the, the work she did. But it isn't, of course, just the employees here. Uh, you, we, I am regularly um, wowed and amazed by what we get from public safety, from uh, public works, from, uh, from libraries, from health department, for youth and elderly. Like, for, you run up and down what uh, the, the employees of the town and they are making our lives better every day. And I really thank them for it. Um, finally, thank my family. As I already mentioned, uh, you know, my mom was a selectman in uh, the town that I grew up in, and my grandfather was a town meeting member in uh, Dedham. And uh, you know, you, 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 why, Dan, why'd you run for a selectman? I say it was genetic. Yes. Um, and uh, of course, thank you to my partner G. Uh, I met G three months after I got elected, so for him, Arlington was kind of part of the package. And I uh, can't tell you how excited he is that, uh, that we've reached the end of that particular road. So, I sure am. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, no! <laughs> uh, so um, I will see you all at town meeting. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dunn. Um, I don't know which order to do it. Um, I certainly have enjoyed and would have loved to enjoy both of our tenure longer uh, on the select board. Um, one thing with Dan is uh, sometimes I would call him and he would have to take my calls. Although he says he still is going to take my calls, though he does not have to. Um, but a lot of times I would call him when um, I'd be in the middle of something that just had seven different ways out. To be that it could be dealt with and was sort of just looking for which might be the best most rational productive all-round reaching um, decision and I could always call Dan um, and it'd say okay wait a minute slow down now tell me what it is you're trying to tell me and I he would let me explain and invariably um, that the road that I took was the road that he um, so wise, wisely counseled me on um, and then the other thing, I, I have to say, there have been times where um, in the beginning of his tenure, just because, you know, we didn't really know each other, I remember Colin saying, oh, there's no way he's going to support me on this, but I'll give it a shot. And by and large, it was around town employees, um, and whether it was recognizing a job they were doing, whether it was um, more uh, thinking about the, the health and well-being of them. And each and every time when I knew what it was that I thought was something good to do, um, Dan not only said, yes, I'm on board with that. A lot of times he came up with um, some other things that I hadn't thought of. And the other thing is his delivery. Um, one of my favorite, favorite things that you did most recently when we were contacting, um, discussing an issue, uh, you said, okay, we're in the middle of this pandemic coronavirus. And uh, by my accounting, today is March 77th. And I could not have said that better because that's exactly how we all felt. So um, I'm not going to say I'm going to miss you. And, and I do want to thank G. Uh, I want to thank Dan for letting me meet G through you. Um, one of the best things I remember is going down Mass Ave and you and G were in a, a car that had the top down. So I don't know which one of the car was. And I saw him and he was, was like, hey, and I was like, got to say G man it was like one of the best days of my life because I got to yell out to him. But I do want to thank um, your family and G your partner um, because it, along with all the campaign volunteers, it really is a family effort because you do sacrifice a lot of time. And even when you're there physically, you sometimes aren't there <laughs> when you're um, dealing in the select board role. So I'm still going to call you a lot. I'm still going to bug you a lot. I'm still going to make you scratch your head a lot. But you have one of the best top three laughs I've ever heard because it, it just basically tickles me to the back of my spine. So, um, and thank you to all my colleagues for their kind remarks um, during my chairmanship. And I do appreciate your uh, confidence and trust in me um, during these and other times. And then um, the last two things, um, sort of three, uh, Lots of parents, youth sports, are um, thrilled that Joe Connolly um, has come back home 
come back home. Um, and I found myself emailing him the first day he was back, not realizing it was his first day of question about the Thompson Sprinkler Park. Um, and I do want to thank Bobby Jeff, Bobby Jefferson, who was the interim um, uh, recreational director, uh, as well as an unbelievable exemplary town employee that um, when he's worked for us as fire chief, um, managed the three houses, fire stations under budget, um, on time, if not early. Um, I really think um, he's has so many other skills. Um, and I was glad to have him back as a town employee. Who knows what the future may hold? Um, but I know he wants to, he did enjoy his retirement and we keep bringing him back out. And then the last thing, um, which Mr. Hurt, John touched upon was um, a sincere thanks to <clears throat> John. I liked hearing about your, it was it aunt Millie or grandmother Millie. I was listening and uh, Mr. Chapdelaine and father Mark. And uh, of course, Jeff Chunglo, um, who is a fantastic soul. Um, I happened to be in the cemetery when he was doing all those flags all by himself and you, you know, he didn't want anyone else to do it, but I think it was a good time of reflection for him. Um, he and I, one of our, um, missions that we're committed to is, um, trying to, uh, stop quell the suicide rates uh, amongst our veterans and those suffering with PTSD. Um, and to me, he's one of the bravest men I, I've ever met. And, and I told him on behalf of the Arlington that, you know, the hundreds, if not close to thousands of people that he's helped and will continue to help. And then I always say the thing that makes him smile at the end because he can't help himself. He almost giggles. So if you ever see Jeff Chungo, a veteran services director, when you're about to say goodbye, just look at him and say, have a Navy day. And that sends him into giggles. He loves the have a Navy day. And with that, um, uh, before I take a motion to adjourn, our next re regularly scheduled meeting and reorganization organizational meeting is for Monday, June 8th, 2020. Is there a motion to adjourn by? So moved. Mr. Dunn, seconded by? Second. Mr. Hurd. Um, a motion to adjourn by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Attorney Heim, roll call, please. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Carroll. Yes. One last time, Mr. Dunn. Yes. Ms. Mahan. No. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. God bless all. Thank you, everybody. That was very kind. Yep. Thank you, Dan.